Eastern, and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And welcome to another episode of me messing around on the railway. Um, yeah, I thought I'd brave the journey up into the loft because it's got really cold over the last few days. Minus threes has been recorded, and when I went to work the other day, that was minus six. So yeah, I'm just having a little look around at the moment. Um, as you know, we just finished the signal box last week and uh, there's another building that needs something to be put inside and that's that little plate laser over there as you can see you can peer right through there and um, there's nothing in it so what would I put in a plate laser maybe you can let me know in the comments below so here we are we're just watching a few trains passing um, what are we going to do in this video? I don't know. Should we go over the bench, over to the bench and find out? Sounds like a cunning plan. So here we are, we're back at the bench. And uh, the other week I was in, in my little drawer full of uh, little um, figures and I found this one. It's a woman holding her hand up to her ear. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, I can put her into a telephone box. So what I'm doing now, I'm just going to paint a little bit of black um, here and there. So it looks like she's got a telephone to her ear. And then I shall stick this young lady into the, the telephone box. Um, as you know, the... Quite recently, I've just been doing lots of little mini projects. Um, and I do enjoy painting up these figures, so I just put a little dab of black there, a little dab of black there, and I need a little dab of black right in the front there, between a hand and a jumper. See if I can do that without touching a face. There you go, so she looks like she's holding a telephone now. So what I'll do is I'll paint this figure up. Um, obviously I'll change them horrible trousers she's got on. Maybe give her a pair of jeans or something. A pair of shoes and then we can put this young lady into this Pico telephone box. Now it hasn't got a floor at the moment, so I've got to put a floor in there. So I've got a little tiny piece of cardboard so I'll super glue that in there and uh, stick this young lady in so let's give her a pair of trousers or a pair of jeans right she's wearing a nice pair of trendy trousers um, something similar to what I probably would have found in the 1950s um, when different color schemes came about the greens and the reds and such like so we'll just wait for that to dry and while we concentrate on the telephone box these little mini projects um, I think I, I like doing these little things rather than the big bigger projects so that should just fit in there nicely now yeah it does I've just got to notch it round Watch the card around these two little tiny spigots that the hinge works off of. So we'll do that and we'll, then we'll glue it in. Right, so I've now glued the um, card into the base of this telephone box. I've um, just put some super glue around the edges. You can see it there, it's just seeping in. Um, and hopefully that'll seal uh, the card in there. 
um, maybe what I should have done is painted the base first before putting it into the telephone box but never mind I can still get a, a brush in there and paint that a really dark concrete grey and then that's ready for the figure to go inside so that's a, a little project almost done just go wait for the paint to dry um, so slightly bigger project this fire engine I've always wanted to fit an LED into one of these um, never done it before so I've got to give it a try first thing I want to do is see how easy it is to get into uh, this um, green goddess fire engine um, it's from Oxford Oxford uh, Rails, well not Oxford Rails, from the Oxford group as it were, because they're a group now aren't they? So let's just see what's inside and see how easy it's going to be. Now what, what I'm hoping for is the little blue light that's on the top there. I'm hoping there's a there's a hole underneath that you want to go do is just poke the LED up, but I don't know. Right, so I've taken that apart. And, uh, oh, there's lots of lots of space in there to um, put cables and and resistors in. So yeah, so that's okay. Right, so there's the as you can see there. There's the little blue light in that corner there, and as you can see, it's just a bit of plastic. So I might have to drill that out. If I don't snap it, let's see if I can squeeze the LED in there. Are the LEDs I'm using um, flashing 0805 blue SMD LED pre wired. They are pre wired, but you've still got to add a resistor, and these are the resistors that come in the pack. Um, I have fitted an LED into the jukebox over at South Shields uh, station. I don't know if you remember that. Um, you do get a, a list of instructions with these, but I can't remember where I got these from. I think there's, uh, there's a guy called Lighting Man. He's normally on the um, exhibition circuits, and I think that's where I got these from. Um, so this is the tiny, tiny LED. It's just really small. And I'm just wondering if I place it underneath, will the light come up through here and I don't have to uh, drill into it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to wire this up, uh, put the resistor on it and try it with the LED facing upwards. So hopefully this, so the LED will flash through the, the beacon here, but we'll have to wait and see and see if that works. Um, so I'll quickly solder the resistor on and give it a try. I've done all the soldering. Uh, the black cable is the live, which is attached to the resistor. And uh, as the white is neutral and that goes to the yellow cable. So what I'm going to do now, um, if we look very, very closely at this LED. So that's the LED side and the other side is where the cables are soldered to. So what I'm trying to do now is make that LED sit. I don't know if you can see if I get this close enough. There's a little tiny square in there. See it? If I can sit that in that square, and uh, then we can test it to see if the uh, light will still come through the beacon on this side. So we shall give that a go if I can get that in there the right way up. Because it's such a tiny tiny LED and I've got to keep it there while I so I'll push that in that corner stick a bit of tape on the back of it it looks like it does fit so I've got a little bit tiny bit of tape there I'll just cut the access off hopefully that 
won't hold that in place. Tiny bit fiddly because the cable wants to twist the other way. As they say, it'll be all right on the night. I have to get my tweezers out for this one. Right, so we've temporarily wired the LED up and as you can see it's working which is great that means I didn't have to drill a hole uh, through into the beacon and that little square there is ideal for sitting the LED in so I've just got to get it the right way up it's not quite there it's half and half I think once that's in the right way up then We'll have no flashing inside the cab. As you can see, it's flashing inside the cab as well. So, we'll just sort this out. I think we can cover the tape over the LED once I get that in place. So, I've got the LED the right way up, but I'm still getting some flash through the insula black insulation tape. So, I'm going to put some black paint and cover up where the flash is coming through and hopefully the light will come out where it should do on this beacon. So we shall try that, let the paint dry of course and uh, see how that looks afterwards. Right, in order to fit the resistor into the fire engine, because I don't want these very fine cables to be outside of the fire engine, because uh, just in case they get tugged on, um, I've cut away some of the fire engine inside there to allow the resistor and the cable to sit in there like so. Um, I've now drilled a 3mm hole into the chassis of the fire engine which I will feed the cables through and then what I'll do then is I'll put a little dab of Yuho glue um, over the hole before screwing the chassis back onto the body. Uh, so just pulling them through. Now I still have to wait until the paint is dry before I um, turn the LED back on. So that should come through there like so and then once that's screwed down that'll be it and we can try it right so I'm just putting a dollop of yuho glue around the cables on this side where the cables come through the chassis and then we can screw this back on and see if it closes up to where it should and lines up with the holes yep it's looking good so far now we can put the screws back in So I didn't realise that this was going to be as easy as it has been because I was expecting to drill holes into the beacon and also didn't realise that there's plenty of room inside the body of this green goddess fire engine so that once the glue is set and the paint is dry inside we'll be ready to go on to the layout and uh, can't see any damage on the outside where I've been handling it drilling it uh, so yeah so that is good Right, so we're taking a break from the fire engine for the moment and I thought I'd just show you a new purchase for 
time dock. Um, yes, you're not seeing double. Well, yes, you are seeing double. <laughs> yes, you are seeing double. Um, last week we kitted out this one, and it looks like we've got to do the whole thing over again for this one. Um, yes, this is the second um, signal box for Tyne Dock, so that's going to be called Tyne Dock East, and this one's going to be called Tyne Dock West. So we'll just pick this up, and I'll show you where it's going to go. I was thinking of uh, digging up the, the ground and putting it there, but no, nope, it's going to go here. Just about there. So as the train comes up from Tyne Dock, goes past Tyne Dock West signal box. Now, if you notice there, I have placed a left hand long radius curve turn out there. And this is for a future plan um, of the layout to bring trains into the MPD here. No, not necessarily trains, but locomotives. Uh, I think I mentioned this before in a previous video. It's just to get the locomotives, because there's no turntable up at... Um, so shields, so the, the, the only way to bring a, a loco facing the right way is to bring them up from the MPD. And uh, that is where the signal box is going to go, somewhere just about there. Bearing in mind, if we come around this way, it needs to be set back at least the width of a track because we've got the redundant siding just here. So if you imagine there would have been a siding yet again in front of the signal box. So if you place that just about there, that'll be uh, an ideal position. And it adds that little bit more interest and detail as we come into the time dock station um, itself. So yeah, so this is a future project. But for now, we have a new signal box, and that's where it's going. Well, this is a rare sight. Uh, here we are underneath the baseboard of South Shields, and uh, just in there is the 10 Road storage yard. Um, I think there's only one road that's free at the moment. Um, but there we go, so that's the storage yard and uh, here we have the terminal block for any future lighting that I'm going to add it to South Shields because as you know South Shields is still not finished anyway as you can see there I've marked it up as 999 services that's where the ambulance and the um, green goddess fire engine is wired into and there's the supply there which comes in from the 12 volt transformer so shall we have a look see if the lights are working and there she is in all her glory um, there's still a little bit of light bleed in the cab as you can see um, that's down to the thickness of the glass the glass is quite thick and it's just coming down through that corner there, you can see, it's just coming down through that corner and it's lighting up the cab a little bit, but uh, I'm quite happy with that. I've managed to do something that I've always wanted to do, is to fit an LED to a fire engine, so there you go, another tick in the box. And it completes the scene along this road. Um, I don't know what the emergency is, but... Um, <laughs> It just it just looks good where you've got a fire engine following an ambulance, so there must be something um, serious going on. But uh, it just creates another detail. Right, so let's go and have a look at the telephone box. And here is where the telephone box lives, just outside Jarrah Road uh, Station. And um, as you can see, Fiona, which I'm calling her, 
is now glued into the telephone box. Now if we turn the telephone box around this way and look closely you can actually see she's holding something to her head so you can actually see she's on the phone so we better be a little bit quiet and put her back I think just in case you notice. So yeah it's all about little details um, so there. Now that the door's closed, <laughs> you don't know if there's anybody in there or not. You can see a faint shadow, but uh, that's just about it. But we know she's in there. So here we are, we're back at the Green Goddess. Um, yeah, there's just one thing missing. We need some sound um, just to finish off this video. So, courtesy of the Hornby soundtrack, I've set it for the fire engine. So, let's just see, we'll just place that on the track. There we go. I think that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks again for watching the mad capers of Tony Northeastern. Take care everybody. Bye for now. Bye.